Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Nothing like having a daily show, right? Where the second you press stop on recording, there is news that makes your last episode out of date. If you are a daily listener, you'll know that yesterday we talked all about the latest in the talent war between OpenAI and Mark Zuckerberg. And literally just an hour or something after I pressed send on that thing, Zuckerberg's super intelligence team was officially announced, so here we are doing the catch-up on that. In a memo to staff on Monday, Zuckerberg introduced his new AI hires and revealed the official name of the new division. He wrote, As the pace of AI progress accelerates, developing super intelligence is coming into sight. I believe this will be the beginning of a new era for humanity, and I am fully committed to doing what it takes for Meta to lead the way. We're going to call our overall organization Meta Super Intelligence Labs, or MSL. This includes all of our foundations, product, and fair teams, as well as a new lab focused on developing the next generation of our models. Now, as we thought, former Scale CEO Alexander Wang will be leading these efforts. He will both lead MSL as well as being named Chief AI Officer for Meta as a whole. Interestingly, when it comes to the labs, he is being joined by Nat Friedman. Nat, you'll remember, previously ran GitHub at Microsoft. And his investment firm with Daniel Gross is one of the most active and successful AI investors. Alongside the note from Zuckerberg, we also got a list of 11 names, some of whom we haven't seen before, who had joined this new effort. In addition to some ex-OpenAI folks who weren't in the initial reporting, we also had a couple others from Anthropic and from Google DeepMind, although the concentration is definitely from OpenAI. Now, in terms of the group's mandate, it's not exactly clear what the balance is between fundamentals research versus product advancement, but it does appear like MSL has a mandate to pursue both. Now, the information for its part is fairly skeptical. They write, This new org is the product of a massive spending spree by Zuckerberg to snag the best AI talent possible in hopes of turning around Meta's recent AI slump. The end result is a team that, without being too cynical, feels highly combustible. Don't be surprised if at least one high-profile departure occurs within a few months. Any group with a lot of big egos working under intense pressures from a controlling chief executive is going to have trouble staying together. They also noted that Alexander Wang at the helm has never produced a foundation model and is better known for his political savvy than his AI skills. They suggested that he will be more of an advisor to Zuckerberg than a hands-on research lead. Touching on Friedman, they pointed out that he turned down the leading role and suggested Wang instead. Concluding, they added, Add to these wrinkles the fact that Meta has hired a bunch of highly paid scientists from OpenAI who will join existing staffers who are likely feeling a little disgruntled at how things have come about. Meta's AI team has undergone repeated upheavals over the past couple of years. Meta could be described as a permanent revolution of AI, and that likely won't stop now. Now, in some ways, the whole process looks a little bit more like assembling a sports super team than a traditional tech hiring plan. From sky-high salaries to plucking top talent from across the sector, Sarah Guo from Conviction wrote, There are now folks helping researchers negotiate their comp packages and taking a fee, like agents for athletes. Look, I think it's completely reasonable to be skeptical of this. It is totally understandable to know where the very real possibilities for breakdown are. But at the same time, while dream teams can break down because of big egos, they can also create their own sense of momentum. You have to think that a lot of these folks joined not just because they were getting huge paydays, although that's part of it. They joined because they thought that if they all joined at the same time, there was a real chance that they could be first to this coveted goal. That creates excitement and, like I said, momentum that I don't think all these media reports are quite giving enough credence to. It's now in the public eye. And we'll see if the spending spree has stopped or if they're still assembling, but Meta's Super Intelligence Lab is here and it is a new force to be reckoned with in the space. Speaking of powers to be reckoned with in the space, Apple seems to be giving up entirely and considering handing Siri over to OpenAI or Anthropic. According to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, Apple has met with both AI companies to discuss using their models to power the next iteration of Siri. Gurman framed this as a, quote, potentially blockbuster move aimed at turning around its flailing AI effort. Until now, Apple used their own in-house foundation models to drive Siri and had been planning to continue on the same course for the new version due next year. The exploration of outsourcing the model is still in its early stages, but the labs have been asked to train a special version of their model that can run on Apple's cloud infrastructure. Apple uses their own silicon rather than industry standard NVIDIA chips, so some conversion is necessary. The internal project dubbed LLM Siri remains ongoing. The shift in thinking was reportedly the result of Vision Pro lead Mike Rockwell taking over the project earlier this year. One of the first orders of business was to test Siri using third-party technology from OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. Rockwell and other executives concluded that Anthropic's models had the best performance, leading them to open discussions with the company about using Claude. Gurman reports that plans are still murky, 
Apple has approved a multi-billion dollar budget for running their own models via the cloud, but beyond that, nothing is set in stone. Still, it seems like executives are reportedly on board with outsourcing the model, with Rockwell and others seeing little reason to stick with their own technology. At the same time, morale in the ranks is beginning to sour, with German writing, Some members have signaled internally that they're unhappy that the company is considering technology from a third party, creating the perception that they are to blame, at least partially, for the company's AI shortcomings. They've said that they could leave for multi-million dollar packages being floated by meta platforms and open AI. Signal captured a part of the zeitgeist on this, writing, Absolutely astonishing. Apple used to own the full stack, silicon to software to services. Now they're outsourcing the one layer that will define the next decade of computing. It's a metaphysical betrayal of their own DNA. OpenAI and Anthropic don't need Apple, but Apple desperately needs one of them. This puts Apple under the models it's integrating. Wild reversal. Whoever they choose, they now owe existential dependency to. And finally, if consumers realize that Siri does not equal Apple anymore, that it's powered by OpenAI or Anthropic, then what exactly is Apple's IP? A thin shell over someone else's mind? That kills the aura of vertical magic. Given how frequently Signal shows up as a quote on this show, I often think that their perspective is very valuable. On this one, though, I have to disagree entirely. My strategic sense is that even if all this is true, it doesn't matter. Apple has to do something big. They are behind, falling more behind, and they are not catching up with their own models. Period. Full stop. End of story. Think about the first thing we just talked about with this incredible spending spree with Zuckerberg. That's what it takes to compete for talent right now, and Apple's not doing it and gives no indications that they're going to do it. So they are left with a set of solutions that involve not having that access to talent. That means that this sort of partnership or acquisition like the perplexity acquisition we talked about last week are their paths forward. Yes, it is the case that Apple used to own the full stack, but that is not a strategy that is available to them now. The longer that they cling vaingloriously to what they once were, the more likely it is that they will never be that again. I also think that this perspective understates the value that Apple still brings and overstates consumer recognition. On the latter point, all that the average consumer wants is for Siri to work. If it works, they're not going to care or ask questions about how it works. I think that the brand risk from having it powered by OpenAI or Anthropic is much lower than it might appear from those of us who are watching this, like baseball stats. And when it comes to the idea that OpenAI and Anthropic don't need Apple, Apple still has an incredible number of installed devices, billions around the world. Getting access to that distribution at a time when models are highly commoditized and getting more so is nothing to sneeze at. Now, OpenAI has ambitions to actually go compete with Apple on its home territory of devices and usher in the post-iPhone era. But Anthropic doesn't, and they don't have the resources to even consider that. So in my estimation, Apple should do something like this, and they should do it as fast as humanly possible. Lastly today, a little fun feature update for those Vibe and regular coders out there. Cursor has launched a web app to manage AI coding agents. The AI coding platform continues to expand their interface beyond the IDE. In May, Cursor launched background agents that are able to take instructions and then work independently of the user. The following month, they introduced a Slack integration allowing users to set the agents to task from within their workspace. And this web app is another natural extension, letting users give instructions via the browser on desktop or mobile. Notably, this is the first time that Cursor has been available on a mobile device without needing to use Slack as a workaround. And at first glance, people love it. Developer Nick Dobos writes, Cursor on mobile is here and it's amazing been using it for a few weeks now, and I will never not be amazed to be merging PRs while riding Peloton. I'm never touching a laptop again. Just bookmark the website on your home screen, and it's basically an iOS app. I am very excited for that to be a new interface norm going forward. And frankly, it just kind of makes sense. If part of the way that we interact with coding isn't sitting there in front of a screen, but is instead interrogating it and using our voice to tell it what to do, that's something that really can be done for mobile. In any case, that is going to do it for our slightly extended version of the headlines. Next up, the main episode.